If you are a Halloween fan, how do you feel about Halloween for the return of Michael Myers? Because for me, it is one of my favorite entries and it got me into the franchise. And so much of that had to do with young Jamie Lloyd portrayed by Daniel Harris. I saw this movie as a little boy and I couldn't believe my eyes once I realized that our protagonist, the person most in danger in this film was somebody my age. I'd never seen that before. And the fact that a horror icon of the ilk of Michael Myers was centering his attention on somebody my age, it shook me to my core, it freaked me out, and it made me so enticed that this instantly became my favorite franchise, not just of horror, but movies anywhere. And it has been a bumpy ride ever since. But this ride is soon gonna arrive at Halloween ends. And that is hopefully gonna be a great time and a fun, fitting conclusion to this new trilogy by David Gordon Green. But of course, once that is done, where do we go with things? Now, we can't just end things. I think we know that because Michael Myers is essentially a modern day Frankenstein or Dracula or the Wolfman. He is like a modern universal monster and he's what we come to the movies for. But when you think horror, you think Michael Myers, at least most people do. So he can't just be phased out and disappear for forever. The fans want more. They need more Halloween. What do we do then? Because we can't just do another remake. We can't just have another entry called Halloween. You know, we got Halloween 1978. We got Rob Zombie's Halloween. We got Halloween 2018. And now we'll have Halloween 2026. That is so blah. That's so passe. We're past that. We can't just do that. And we can't just do a remake of the same old story. We need to do something bold and fun. And maybe continue a story that there's still something to do a little something, something with. I'm talking about the story of Jamie Lloyd. And I'm talking about Danielle Harris, who does a podcast with her co-star, Scout Taylor Compton. I'm, of course, referring to the Rob Zombie movies. They do a podcast. You should give it a listen. I listen to it sometimes while driving for work. They talk about horror. They talk a lot about Halloween and they even talk about the risque sex stuff sometimes. So if that piques your interest, give them a listen. I will link to it down in the description. But recently, Danielle Harris pitched her idea for what to do in a post Halloween ends world. And this is it. She wants to focus on Jamie Lloyd. She'll be returning. Of course, I can't knock her for that. You know, the fans love her. She loves the fans. Just makes sense. And we all love this character. We want to see more of her. So let's see where she's going here. Okay. So Jamie Lloyd is not living in Chicago. She has a family. She's got a husband and two children, and she's done some work on herself. Either she's gone to therapy and worked past her demons and her terrifying past, or she has straight up repressed it a little bit like, you know, Halloween H2O, but maybe even worse. Maybe she doesn't even talk about it. Maybe she doesn't acknowledge what happened and she's living kind of a lie. Her husband doesn't even know about her past and she's content to live that way until she starts to see some weird things going on with her daughter because you have to think about it. In Halloween 4, she finds out that Michael Myers is her uncle and he comes for her. Halloween 5, she's now developed this sort of weird psychic telekinetic, I don't know if that's the right word, but anyway, this connection to her uncle in which she can see what he can see. She sees his slains. He can kind of tap into her psyche and realize where she is located and you could do so much more with that. Now, because that's been encoded in her DNA, she's passed it to her daughter, who may be having some sort of visions or nightmares. Again, think about Halloween 4, the Jamie's nightmare scene where you see Michael sit up and you have that flash of lightning. It looks great. They know it looks great. That's why they always put it on the commercials on AMC's Fear Fest, because they know you see that, you're going to check that movie out. It's one of my favorite little stills in the entire franchise. So you could do a nice nightmare with this young daughter or even in a grown-up Jamie Lloyd. I think that would be great. That's what I'm saying. We could kind of tap back into what worked but make it new and revitalized for modern audiences. And I love this relationship to where the husband's going to be concerned and his mind is going to be blown when he finds out what's going on with his wife, Jamie. And then Jamie, she thought she was doing the best she could. She was trying to care for her daughter and her family by just trying to strip them of after ever worrying about this and their relation to the boogeyman, this notorious infamous killer. But now, she can't, she can't ignore it anymore. Something has to be done, especially because she knows through that connection, if her daughter is seeing these things, it's not just that her daughter is troubled. It's likely that Michael Myers is back in some capacity, or at least the evil that kind of possessed Michael Myers or surrounded Michael Myers, surrounded the shape. It may now be imbued into the daughter, maybe imbued to her. Who knows? But you could see something happens where Michael Myers now knows their location and comes to them in Chicago. Michael Myers in Chicago. Don't know how I feel about that. That could be great. That could be fantastic. I do love the idea of creating up uh, like a plot to where he doesn't have to be confined in Haddonfield. He can be in another town nearby or he can come all the way to Chicago for all I care. You could do something neat with that. It doesn't have to be bad, you cynics. But what I don't love about her idea is she says she wants to bring Laurie Strode, Jamie Lee Curtis back into the fold. 
She wants her to be like, you know what? I have to face this head on. I know my mom faked her death and I was put up for adoption and they changed my name and this and that, but I need to go get her. I need to have her counsel and we need to take on the boogeyman ourselves. That's kind of the Daniel Harris idea. That's the only part of it I don't like because Halloween ends is to be Jamie Lee Curtis's last hurrah. And I'm, I'm good with that. She's had a ton of injuries to date. So let it be done over through. Let's do something new. We have other characters that fans love, i.e. Jamie Lloyd. Now we can introduce other fun characters like her daughter or her son and her husband. And you have a new setting. And who knows how you would explain Michael coming back. They've done it in all sorts of different ways. So that could get really interesting. So I say you bring back Alan McElroy, who wrote Halloween 4 and recently wrote Wrong Turn, which I also love. So I'm kind of a fan for what this guy does and what happens when he puts pen to paper. And he has ideas for the Halloween franchise. So I say we get the game back together, y'all. I think this would be great. I really would be interested to see this kind of play out. We get Jamie Lloyd back. We have a story by Alan McElroy. We don't need Laurie Strode. We have a new direction for our franchise. The only problem to me is can you get the mass audience intrigued? Can you get them up to speed? At first I was like, I don't think you can. How do you talk about maybe retconning Halloween 6 and everything then after? How do you get a bunch of commoners, commoners, that sounds so insulting. How do you get the common fan or somebody who's coming to their first Halloween movie to get on board with something that's like, yeah, this is about the first four or five entries, but not everything that came after. And I was like, I, I don't think you can do that. But Maybe you could. Maybe you market this film. You dice up a bunch of different little moments from Halloween 4 and Halloween 5. You montage them. You flash them like they used to do in the 80s. You used to like think like the opening of a Friday the 13th movie. You'd always get a little montage. So if you were coming into Halloween 7, or sorry, Halloween, Friday the 13th 7, and you haven't seen other entries, you could really quick get up to speed. And be like, okay, okay, I've seen some of the highlights. I've seen the kills. I know what characters are around here. And I know what's going on with Jason. You could do that with Michael Myers, and I think it would work. I think a lot of people give horror a pass in a lot of ways when it comes to things like plot and character. So you use that and they're going to give you a little wiggle room. You take that inch and you take it a mile because once you get going, if you make it a solid movie with some creepy stalking and lovable characters and you're going new directions and you have an evil that feels palpable and interesting and completely innovative and new and fresh from everything else we've previously seen in this franchise, then nobody's going to give a mother F. You know what I'm saying? So I really love her idea here. And I think she's a great actress. And I don't think her career has panned out the way that it should have. When you see what she was able to do as a child actress, and I've seen some of her work since then, she has great screen presence. She has great acting chops. And she knows this franchise like the back of her hand. So seeing her play off Michael Myers, I'm always here for it. Getting the boogeyman out of the suburbs, getting him out of Haddonfield, that could be fun and fresh and different and all the best. Best ways. Getting another young protagonist in the sight line of Michael Myers, that could bring in another another generation of fans. Just like Halloween 4 did with me and people of my age, we could do that all over again and make sure this thing keeps going and that the lifeblood of Halloween pumps strong for decades to come. So not to say this is going to happen. This is not me breaking news. This is just me saying, hey, I heard something fun on a podcast and you should check it out. I love what I started thinking about. I love where I got my mind going and I see great potential in it. And if nothing else, it's fun to talk about and to consider the possibilities. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Be sure to subscribe if you're a Halloween fan as well. We do a whole lot of Michael Myers and Halloween content here on Nate Mayer Flicks. And of course, have yourself a great day. I'm Nate for Nate Mayer Flicks saying that's a wrap.